So I need to give a shout out to my friend Unmesh from Piximperfect, who posted a video recently about this because I totally missed it. But wow, this new remove tool in Photoshop is incredible. So like I said, Unmesh posted a video about this new remove tool just a few days ago, and as usual does a great job explaining it and going through some examples of using it. But seeing his video, I just had to check it out and try it on some of my own images. But I also thought for this video, I'd do a bit of a deep dive into Content Aware Fill to show how we can use it in a different way to get a great result removing this tricky area here. So this new remove tool at the moment is in Photoshop Beta, but it is available to everyone who is an Adobe Creative Cloud subscriber. You can download the beta just by going to the Creative Cloud app, going to the Beta Apps section and just clicking on Install. Once you have it installed, the remove tool is found amongst the Healing Brush section, or by pressing J on the keyboard. So let's kick off then with this picture here of my wife doing her bit for the environment, picking up some plastic off the beach. Now if I was to use, say, the Spot Healing Brush, I'd brush all over her and her shadow and then release. But the result isn't that good. So let's try good old Content Aware Fill. I'll grab the Lasso tool and make a loose selection around her again and her shadow. Then I'll go to Content Aware Fill and again, not that good of a result. But let's now try the Remove tool, which uses artificial intelligence, so it should give us a way better result. Using the Remove tool, I'll brush all over her and her shadow to cover with this pink overlay. And then just release, and moments later, way better result. In this example here, I'll cover my wife and the dogs with the Remove tool and it does a great job removing them. But there's a little bit here that's gone a bit odd. Now, because the Remove tool uses artificial intelligence, I'll brush over that area again to see if it recognizes what it should do. And there you go, done. Now, when we use the Remove tool, just like every other tool in Photoshop, we have options available in the Options bar. One of them is the Sample All Layers checkbox. So if we tick this, we can use the tool non-destructively on a blank layer, rather than on the top of the original or a copy. So I'll add a new blank layer. I'll rename it Remove. And then I'll use the Remove tool to cover over myself with the overlay. And it's done. And that's not easy with there being water splashes. There's a little bit here again that looks odd, but if I brush over, again, the AI fixes it. Now this picture here is a bit more challenging with the waves crashing, but look, I'll use the Remove tool and brush all over me and the tripod, and yet again, it does a great job. That is so impressive. Now another option we have when using the Remove tool is this checkbox here, Remove after each stroke. Now at the moment I have this ticked, and that basically means that whenever I use the Remove tool and brush over with that overlay, the minute I stop and release, it then gets to work to remove whatever it is that I've covered. But if I untick it, it allows me to add multiple strokes and then tell Photoshop to remove it. This picture here is a perfect example of when to use it, with all these people spread about all over the beach. So I'll just cover them all. And when I've done that, I just then press the tick in the Options bar. And moments later, it's done. Now there's a couple of areas to sort out. This one over here, and the water here looks a bit odd too. Now there's a few reflections I could go back and remove, but again, it's done a great job. The last thing I want to show you is a different way of using Content Aware Fill when you're working in areas that are a little bit challenging. In this picture here, the majority has been removed using the Remove tool. But this area here in the bottom right, it's just not the right tool. For this, I'd use Content Aware Fill. I'll start by making a selection, and for this I'm using the Pen tool. Then once I have the selection, I go to Content Aware Fill. But even though I tell it not to use certain parts of the picture to cover over that area, it doesn't work well. And that's because we have two very different areas to cover, the floor and the wall. 
And that's a big ask to expect it to be able to do that. Instead, this is how I would do it. I'd make a selection of the wall area first. Then, when I have the selection, go to Quick Mask by pressing Q. We can see the selection would be very sharp and defined, so I'll just feather it a little by adding some Gaussian blur. Only a small amount, and then come out of Quick Mask. Next, I'll go to Content Aware Fill, and I'll completely remove the green overlay, which is covering the areas that Photoshop will use as a reference to fill the selected area. Now when I do that, I get this warning box, basically saying that Photoshop has no idea what it can use. But then I use the Add to Overlay tool in the top left, and then brush over just the wall area, telling Photoshop to use this only. I'll then check to see if changing the colour adaptation helps to blend it better, but I think I'll just use Default and click OK. I'll then use the Clone Stamp tool at around 50% opacity to blend it in a little bit better. OK, now the floor area. So again, I make a selection. I go to Content Aware Fill. Remove the overlay and then tell Photoshop, only use this area of the floor as reference. And done. I can try Colour Adaptation, but actually I think I'll just click OK. And then again, I'll use the Clone Stamp tool to tidy this area up, and then add a simple Levels Adjustment with a Clipping Mask to add a bit more blue. And we're done. Now just one more thing to make it look more realistic where the wall and the floor meet. I'll create a merged layer at the top of the layer stack and then make a selection of this area with the lasso tool and copy it onto its own layer. I'll move it and reposition it and then duplicate it to extend it along a bit. These two layers I'll then merge together and then use a levels adjustment to brighten it up and then a mask to blend it in. Done. So this is before, and this is after. Now the Remove tool is still in beta, so just bear that in mind when you use it. But already, as it is, very impressive. Now if you're watching this video on the day I published it, there's just two days to go until the Photoshop Creativity Virtual Summit, which means two days left to grab a free pass. The summit starts on Monday the 17th of April, and you have 48 hours to watch each of the day's classes from the day they're released. There's also a VIP pass available, meaning you can get all of the content to keep, so just go to the link, get your free pass, and if you don't use it, you've lost nothing. Right, that's all for this video, so like, subscribe, share if you want to, and I'll catch you in the next video.